This video is going to show you how to write a math sentence for torques, for summing up the torques. Now, in any language that you're uh, communicating in, whenever you write out a sentence, there's a certain format everyone expects to see. Capitalization, punctuation, noun, verb, agreement, all those types of things. Math isn't any different, so here's our rules for writing our math torque sentences. First, let's say we have a board, and this board's going to rotate around some pivot point. Now, I'm picking the pivot point to, to look at, so it's going to have some kind of rotation. The question for you is, is this a positive rotation or a negative rotation? How do I communicate that to someone who's viewing my, my written work? Well, to do that, we have a point in our sentence where what we're going to do is we're going to write this little symbol. And this little symbol means everything that rotates counterclockwise or anticlockwise is considered a positive torque. And if any force that causes around my pivot point is to rotate the opposite of this direction is a negative torque. So this indicates the direction of a positive torque. So that way everyone who looks at it knows exactly what I'm talking about. Next part of my sentence is this. It's the Greek letter sigma. And sigma means I'm adding up stuff. So nerds, geeks, whatever, we like shorthand. And this is going to be our shorthand for the phrase, I'm adding up stuff. Now a little note about this. Whenever you see this written in a textbook or you see it printed, it looks something like this. It's got these little pieces on the end. These are called serifs. Now, when you're writing it by hand, you might be tempted to copy this because, you know, we all know you've got to be exact in what you're doing. However, you don't need to write this as a serif font when you're doing it by hand. Instead, you can just write it as kind of sans serif, just like this is fine. Make sure it doesn't look like the letter E because it is a foreign language. It's Greek, so it should look like the letter sigma when you're writing it. Okay, so now back to our sentence. Last thing we said was we have the Greek letter sigma, and it means we're adding up stuff. Now we need to communicate to the person reading what we're adding up. So this is the symbol for torque. It's the Greek letter tau. This is a lowercase tau in this case. It looks kind of like a T with a little tail on it. The next thing I need to do to communicate my math sentence is where is the pivot point that I'm looking. So it's not really where it's rotating. It's where I'm looking when I start examining this mathematically. Next to the tau, in a subscript, I'm going to write the name of the pivot point's location. You're only going to do this once, so be descriptive. Don't be short with it, your description of where it is, but, but really describe it in, in a good long phrase so someone else can see exactly what you're talking about. Now, with our pivot point, what we're going to do is we're going to add up everything. So that's got to equal something. In this case, it's going to equal the net torque, which is nice for all our problems, though. We're talking about static equilibrium or mechanical equilibrium, so for everything we're going to do, it's always going to be equal to zero. But again, it's part of the math sentence, so you need to write that. And that's going to equal the final piece. And the final piece is going to be the sum of the torques themselves. So everything that's going to rotate in my positive direction that I indicated with my symbol will be a positive FD. Anything that rotates the opposite direction will be a negative FD. So I'll just write plus and minus all my little torques as I work through this. In the example problems, we'll show this in more detail. But this is basically the structure for the math sentence that we're writing using torques.